Now, do you like this goat? Yeah, I don't mind him. Well, it's not just the case that you don't mind him. There are, or have been, ancillary benefits to having Eric in the pub, correct? This, I have to tell you, I've had a look at this pub and it's a good one. It's a lovely local pub and you've invested your own emotional and financial capital for good reason. Good. It's a very nice one. I'd go into it. <gasps> Okay. Well, I'm, I'm pleased that he's dressed appropriately for court. <laughs> Although, I don't know, he looks a bit like Christopher Biggins in that time. <laughs> now, madam, there were what I might describe as commercial benefits to you. Because, as I understand it, lots of the locals liked Eric. What's more, he became something of a local celebrity. True? True, Judge. Which was assistive to you because it advertised your pub. Let's have a look. This made the local headlines. Eric the Pygmy Goat loves trips to his local pub and even wears a Manchester United shirt on match days. In other words, you got some rather good... <laughs> In other words, you received a benefit. Correct? A publicity benefit by having the goat there, even though the goat damaged your property. Yes, True? Judge. That's very important. Now we come to some law, which I'd like you both to comment on. There is an Animal Act, which covers liability for, not quite, but potentially this sort of situation. <coughs> it's in two parts. Let's have a look at the first part. A person is liable for damage done by animals they own, which belong to a dangerous species. A dangerous species is not one which is normally domesticated. Would you describe a goat as being normally domesticated, to be held on a lead and to go to Blackpool for the day. <laughs> no, Judge. No. In other words, you say that you are covered by this Act. Yes, Judge. You say a goat is, for the purposes of this Act, a dangerous species. Let's say I agree with you. Goats are not normally domesticated in this way. No, they're not. Dogs, cats, etc. That, I should tell you, madam, reading that part of the Act alone, Benefits you, doesn't it? Except there's a second part of the Act. Let's have a look. However, there are exceptions to this liability. One exception arises where a person who suffers damage has voluntarily accepted the risk of such damage. Now, madam, to what extent do you believe that you have voluntarily accepted the risk of the damage to your property? I don't judge. Well, you let a goat into your pub, you allowed it to be there for some time, you allowed the goat to be there even after it had caused the initial damage to cause more damage. Yes, Judge, but, in fairness, Jack did say he would sort anything out that the goat did. Is that correct? Did you give that assurance? Yes, I did do. Now, which was the first of the damage in chronological order? Was it the weeing or was it the radiator no, cover? No, the pansies first. It was the pansies first. <laughs> Understood. That, madam, is very, very helpful indeed. Oh, he's pouting at me. <laughs> Eric! <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Jackie is very cross with you, Eric. <laughs> what do you have to say? <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Now, Jackie, Jack, you... Oh, what's he doing? Lying down. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you brought your goat, Eric, into Jackie's pub. Correct. You did so in circumstances where Jackie was prepared, as the owner of the pub, to accept the risk that a goat might do something to damage her property. I'm told by Jackie, you gave her assurances that that wasn't the case. I absolutely believe everything that's said. The first damage that occurred to Jackie's property was the flowers in the flower bed. That was when, all I can say is that Eric had a relationship with the pansies. Now, it seems to me, Jackie, that you're entitled to be compensated for the damage to those pansies, which is £75. However, after that time, as a matter of law, you were on clear notice that there was a substantial risk that bringing a goat into your property would cause damage to the pub. And consequently, according to the relevant law, I'm unable to do anything because there is an exception
where you have voluntarily accepted a risk by bringing a goat into your business. Consequently, any of the other damage, the carpet, the radiators, etc., as a matter of law, despite his assurances, are, as a matter of law, your fault. And so there's nothing I can <coughs> do about it, despite wanting to help. Consequently, this court can only award you the sum of £75 for the first amount of damage that was caused and advise you in the strongest possible terms to put a very big note on the front of your pub saying no goats allowed, especially Eric. <laughs> I'm afraid I have to dismiss the rest of your case. Thank you for bringing Eric. The award of this court is £75. And I wish you and your very lovely local pub the best of luck. Thank you, Judge. Jackie was awarded £75 on her original claim. Let's find out how both parties felt about their day in court. End of the day, I'm responsible for the damages. So... The law states otherwise. You're not going to do any, anything about it, though, are you? No, not really. The law's a law. I'll go in ahead, Paul, but I don't think I'll be going in that one. I think I've been barred. I will put these signs up saying no goats. Oh, I'll probably put no animals at all, and I don't get caught again. I feel sorry for her. She put some hard money into it. But end of the day, it's life. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judge rind of moments. And... I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel. Right now. That's an order.